Good day to you. This is the third lecture of the series of lectures on management. Now we looked at the uh, lecture one, uh, definition of management, and we looked at the strategic planning. The second lecture we looked at the operational planning. Today we are looking at the organizing part of it. You have planning, organizing part of it, and the management process. Uh, in the organization part, the main main uh, component what we do is we will allocate resources in order to get the uh, uh, management process done. So look, look at the, what are the main resources you need. We spoke about it in our, some time ago. Infrastructure you need, facility management, human resources, equipment, supplies, methods and information. So uh, what are the unique features of the resources used in healthcare? One thing is infrastructure. It's a cost of the building, very expensive cost. It's a very complicated services that you do. Right, not only one, you have theatres, ICUs, etc., oxygen, it's very complicated. Then the clinical needs of the infrastructure, the proper walls, uh, the uh, non-antibiotic non microbial stuff, infection control techniques, all that, and even the air conditioning, you know. And there's a multidisciplinary staff working in this. Uh, different types of people, but at the end of the day, you're really looking at the patient care. Uh, then maintenance, you have to maintain these things, very expensive maintenance, right? And then as a utilizing this I spoke to you, right? Space versus the work environment, and how much of space you need in order to do things. Now, for example, now COVID has changed the whole world differently. We don't know whether we can run hospitals anymore because with the distancing and all that. But, but primarily, we looked at the control of infections. We look at the infection control, other methods, hand washing, you know, keeping places clean, etc. And health and safety of the patients, right? So, and the staff as well, right? What are the things? Look at these areas, very important areas, right? And civil uh, and mechanical and engineering uh, areas, right? Uh, what are the building uh, management, right? Services. And then need to have a good knowledge of a medical administrator or the nursing administrator or the nursing in charge who have a better understanding how to manage the infrastructure, right? And then, then look at the human resources. Uh, demand for human resources. Now, if you look at the manpower is the most expensive uh, in the hospital. Now, we spend more than 40 to 60 percent of our expenditure is on the human resource, right? And then we have a large number of categories, starting from the cardiac surgeon to the boatman. Now, Delft Island, uh, they have to go in a boat. There's a boatman category also. There are about nearly 200 different categories, 180 to 200 different categories in the health sector, right? And uh, how can you use the best uh, use of the existing manpower? How will you use them? Then it says right person uh, has to be there. That's a recruitment. They should do the right job. That's a job design. I'll talk to you what job design is. Right quantity, not in, I mean, right enough. Uh, you have to forecast the number uh, that you need. A future forecast has to come in. Then the right quality, they align with the organization culture and objectives. So these are the things in a proper HR management. Now, we do a short term management, right? Then you have long term management. Um, so definition of HR management, human resource management is the acquisition. Uh, development, allocation and utilization of the manpower efficient and effectively to achieve the organization goals and objectives. Acquisition, development, allocation and utilization. Um, so generally there are policies in the organization. Our state sector has a policies, private sector has policies. Uh, then uh, if you are expanding in future, uh, expanding the forecast now as an administrator I can uh, uh, I can remember sometimes you expand the hospital without looking at the uh, uh, training needs. Now in Sri Lanka, there are a lot of ICUs idling with the equipment, with the infrastructure, with due to lack of ICU trained nurses. So uh, then you will look at the employee market. Some people go out of the country. Some people go to the private sector, right? All that. And then uh, look at the hospital other variables. What is the general shortage at the specialized skills, as I told you before? And uh, it's very expensive. The training is expensive. And the, you have to have short-term and the long-term training. Uh, then some of the hospitals, uh, the clinics, we learn specialized skills, specialized 
hospitals. Uh, then if you change the hospital structure, you need different people and depending on the policies of the hospital. And then technical advancement because you have to, the, most of the most of the equipments now, uh, there's no, not machines, but there are a lot of softwares. So what is the uh, IT knowledge of these people? What are the skills of uh, uh, new skills that they need, right? The categories, right? And there's global pressure for all the nurses to be in par with world standards. What are the regulations, the labor regulations, what we have, health ministry regulations, right? Or the other private sector uh, organization regulations. Uh, they look at the medical nursing and other council registration, accreditation bodies, WHO, organization policies, right? So objectives of general uh, uh, human resource planning is to utilize them well, uh, assessment of the input, anticipate of the output, and you can read this slowly. Now, this is a uh, human resource process. You forecast the future requirements, then uh, look at from where you can get it, and then use the maximum of this uh, human resource and then training and development. Then there will be resignation, retirement and discharge and transfer. You have to really look at this. Uh, when you are looking at the hospital environment, uh, the unit design is very important. We have to look at the unit design is what is the human resource structure of the organization, how many needs and what are as per the standards of the hospital. And then uh, how many, what's a qualify, what's the uh, skills that they should have, quantify how many numbers you need. It's called a job design. And then you organize the HR policies. If you look at the unit design, uh, the unit has to be uh, the uh, HR, uh, the nurses, let's say take nurses, should be agile. They should be able to move into agility, move into one could work in the theater, then other times uh, less, the non-theater hours, they should be able to work in the OPD or any other department, agility. Then the lean, you should have many people there. So it's a fat structure, right? They do, they might not be able to do uh, fat structures are not good for hospitals. So you have a lean structure. Then faster patient process, how can you? Uh, support to uh, to get the throughput of the patients, right? Safety and minimum risk for the staff and the customers. How can you do all this? That's your need design. And then you put up the HR standards. Now generally a ward would have six to one, six beds to one patient, right? Um, it's, uh, six, six beds to one patient. And specialized ones, you know, one to one, like ICU, right? Uh, then um, how can you look at the, uh, then you go into look at the job design, right? Job design is uh, a person sitting in one position, what are the knowledge that they need, what are the skills that they need, what are the aptitude that they need, attitude that they need, that's the design. It's knowledge, of course, the qualification that they have, the training that they have, skill, the experience that they have, aptitude, they are the orientation, uh, their positive attitude towards work, right? And then aptitude is the expandability of a person, the how much of a potential that person has to take up a different uh, situation, a different level. Can a, a nurse in the medical department, can she be the in charge, you know, uh, all that. So we uh, generally, in a, in a, if you can read this uh, to make a job design, you have to analyze the job first, right? You look at what are the scope of work that they do need. Then you write down the this thing in a job description and then you specify exactly what they are supposed to do. This is called a job design. Then we look at the equipments. Now we spoke about the human resource. Then we look at the equipments. Now equipments uh, is very expensive. There are medical equipments and non-medical equipments like furniture and then the ultrasound scanner. They are very capital intensive in nature. That means that we have to spend a lot of money to buy them. And they are very expensive. And lifetime is, uh, there has a lifetime, five years, maybe three years for a, a ECG machine, uh, maybe sometimes seconds in some of the uh, pulse oximeters, etc. You can, if you drop it, it's gone. So, therefore, uh, they need to replace, right? And then uh, there's software and hardware, I spoke about it. And then handling is very important, the training is important, and the uh, utilization, how much you utilize these machines, and then the forecast. And then you need supplies to run a machine. You need uh, sometimes uh, uh, chemicals to run. Uh, then maintenance and service agreements. Because uh, most of the time, you have to really have to, when you buy, buy a machine, 
or even a donate donated machine ask for a service agreement otherwise generally it's very expensive the service agreement and you have to maintain it. if the machine breaks down your service is going to interrupt it so you have to stop that happening and uh, look at the lead time uh, when you're ordering equipment there's a you can't just buy over the chef there's a lead time there's a time that they take to uh, manufacture and give it and this is handled by agents it's a complicated industry you should make sure nobody is taking a, a buck out of it you have to uh, you have to really make sure transparent process when you buy equipment then the supplies you look at uh, the supplies there are medical and non medical supplies look at the cost of uh, each one and then the quality of the uh, uh, supplies that you get efficacy how much is working how much evidence based uh, right and then uh, uh, look at storing and expiry date uh, estimation of the forecasting and the management of the supply chain you look at all these areas uh, when you try to uh, do that and then uh, if your best is to in a hospital uh, to develop a uh, formulary a list of drugs right what we do is uh, once you have a list of drug called formulary then uh, that gives a reference to prescribers also streamline the range of drugs you can just have a thousand drugs you can have about 500 600 drugs and then um, you 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 only store the drugs which are useful right uh, so these are the things a formulary quality patient care at affordable price reduce the inventory holding cost when you have a store a lot of money lot of drugs it's a it's a lot of inventory that you are holding and then reduce the storage space also think about it more and more and then reduce the chances of medical medication error so i'm going to do a little bit of more on this because you deal you deal with this uh, basically what we do is uh, we have a list of pharmaceutical drugs in a formulary it's reviewed periodically annually and uh, and then monitored by the pharmacy manager and you are also part of it uh, so the you can include the ph new pharmaceutical or delete the previous ones uh, it's regulated by the drug committee and distributed to medical and nursing staff formulary uh, that uh, the, we categorize on the therapeutic class uh, generic names are displayed jo uh, doses forms the doses guide abbreviation short forms will have to be there if you are looking at it um, now basically the list is approved by the drug committee stocked by the pharmacy available for you to use it including nurses so there are non formulary drugs which are not in the formulary not reviewed by the drug so generally we do local purchase uh, and emergency only we will use them and then uh, when you look at the selection of drugs you have to really look at the need of the drug efficacy risk and the cost the need if you look at it um, uh, the need was wants now some doctors or somebody wants those drugs uh, the, the need is you just uh, use the generic drugs uh, right and then uh, is it really needed right uh, efficacy in treating and its condition uh, can you use any substitute cheaper one right and then uh, any vested interest to the prescriber we don't know but we will have to really ignore these things and make sure the cost effectiveness then the efficacy you know uh, evidence based medicine what is the best drug for this thing you know the covid crisis they came up lot of stories they came with primaquine chloroquine this and that ultimately what is the evidence says right and the risk side effects adverse reactions uh, patient acceptability and the ease of administration as you uh, nurses you this prescribe what is the best mode of uh, storage uh, in any special storage requirement you need that you know uh, 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 cold storage those are expensive how can you use the use the drugs which you, you use for uh, mainly in room temperature and the cost of the drugs also the efficacy relative uh, drugs in the same drug class right uh, cost to the hospital acquisition cost to buy if you have a in between a broker you should uh, agency might have a, a lot of money in between then the cost will go up uh, and the long term and uh, short term uh, duration so tip for base best by better management of formula it's an area you can look at as nurses one thing is in addition must be uh, come with the deletion uh, avoid duplication for the same drug class do not keep multiple strengths we keep uh, as minimum strength you can break it and give it if you can avoid drugs with a similar packaging because they might 
have a risk in uh, giving the wrong drug. Uh, frequent drug utilization and surveillance is very important. And beware of manipulation by prescribers. And uh, don't afraid to say no. Uh, less bulky packages. Get less bulky packages. You can uh, store them. Then uh, best that you take uh, drugs which are stabilized at room temperature. And less likelihood to break plastic process this day. And, uh, and then possibility of break dosage and multipurpose, right? And then patient friendly packing. Uh, then do, let's look at go for methods that we use. As I told you before, one of the one of the one of the resources that you need is the uh, policies and protocol uh, as an input to the uh, your management process. Uh, policies and protocols, well, strategic uh, long term objectives, short term objectives, and the hospital and the unit and the standards. Uh, we have the national standards. We have international standards. Uh, there are life saving uh, standards. There are cost saving standards. Then monitoring and feedback. Those are the important ones. Then we go into information management, right? Uh, we have a hospital information system called HIS. And what are the uses of hospital information systems? And HIMS is a hospital health and health information management system. PHI is the public health information management system. And there's a support service care. Now, people will look at the hospital management system, only the clinical care. No, 60% of the care is on support service care, which I told you before. Uh, and then the clinical service management is about 40%. And then monitoring mechanisms. And how can you use this information for future planning and forecasting? And that will be useful for quality and financial audits. Then we, we I just mentioned on facility management before. Uh, so, and then similarly, you should look at the, these areas.